Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 2024 Irish horror movie Oddity. This is a film by director Damien McCarthy. McCarthy is known for his 2020 debut, Caveat. I watched Caveat back in 2020. Uh, don't really remember so much about it, except that there's like uh, a weird uh, stuffed animal rabbit in it. Oddity is about a mannequin, I think, from what I've seen in the posters. I don't know. I'm just interested to check out this director's work to see if he manages to hit another one out of the park in terms of the supernatural horror. So yeah, without further ado, let's watch Oddity. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Kind of like the environments I've seen so far of this director of Damien McCarthy's uh, movies. I wouldn't quite label them like folk horror, so to speak, but maybe folk horror adjacent. They seem to take place in kind of like rural areas, isolated, woodlandsy. Stalling a trap door. I wonder how that's going to come into play. Hmm. Maybe like an Oculus kind of situation. You can't trust your eyes, so you need uh, photography to verify. I found a signal. Where? Upstairs at the uh, end of the wall play. Um, maybe we can invite my sister for dinner tomorrow evening? Kind of worried about her. She just gets mad when I ask her. What do you want me to ask? <laughs> That's an interesting diagram. Yeah, of course. I can be the villain. Well, you're my hero. A little bit of a short foreshadowing in that line. I'm guessing I could be the villain. Okay. I love you. Love you. Hello, you've reached Darcy O'Dello. Hey, guess what? We are connected. Same actress? Twins, maybe? <laughs> could you open the door? Oh, it's a glass eye. I thought it was like um, a contact. I saw you come out of the house just now. You went to the car to get something. Somebody went inside. What are you doing standing outside my house? My husband's going to be back any minute. Dr. Timmons works nights. Uh-oh. Oh, um... Are you a, a patient of, of Ted's? I heard them in the wall. And I saw someone. There's no I really like taking it from his I perspective mean, here. I've made a mistake. If I open the door... What are you going to do if you don't see anyone? I'll leave. His pupils are so uh, pupil is so dilated. The uh, production design reminds me a little bit of Lucille Hajit Halalovich. I'm guessing madness is going to be a recurring theme with this director. What is the shape, the, the look of madness? Who is somebody who is mad? By what definitions does that conform to? I'm not going to be able to show that on YouTube. You should know that every item in here is cursed. I'm guessing this is um, Darcy. These are lifted at the time of purchase. You'd be surprised how many stolen items are returned to me. For those lucky enough to figure out where their sudden bad luck is coming. Okay, needful things. Your mother would have been proud of you, Darcy. Ted. Oh, she's blind. <laughs> Okay, so eyeballs is going to be a thing in this. This is one of the more interesting items that has been brought to the store in quite a while. It's, it's haunted. Are you telling me that if you ring that bell, a dead bellboy will come running? <laughs> Better not to find out. Well, ring it. Let's see what happens. That's it. That's all that's left of it. 
My impulse was to crush it under my shoe, but then I remembered he wanted it. I also love how that's kind of um, the eye itself is reflected in the design of the handkerchief. Is this going to be a ghost off? Is this going to be uh, Sadako versus Kyoko? Kyoko? It'll be the ghost of the old house versus uh, versus Danny. Oh, it's a little rabbit in caveat. Nice. <laughs> I see uh, McCarthy is starting his own little uh, insidious or conjuring universe. You look tired. Just don't say that to a woman. Well, I didn't sleep last night. It's your wife's. Oh, it's going to have photos of apparitions. It would be weird if you didn't want to keep some memory of her. They keep on um, photographing Ted's the back of Ted's head. I wonder if that's going to allude to something. Kind of similar, I, I guess, to The Conjuring. Something that I, I've seen in McCarthy's stuff so far is kind of like objects holding remnants, home, holding memories. Hmm that um that like a certain essence or vestige is left within inanimate objects i took these two nights ago <laughs> lake mungo well, then it's... <sighs> skywalks are dangerous we know this from um well there's your problem um, come in. Maybe you could guide me? She keeps on flirting with him. Ted didn't mention he invited me. Uh, well, to be honest, Darcy, I didn't know you were coming either. I can drop you off my way. I'm here now. I don't remember this from Caveat. Like Maybe a I little know. bit in some ways, but there's like a bit of, um... Uh, a like construction to his shots uh, at certain points that is like very prescriptive he, he has very kind of geometrical shots uh this one of darcy in particular just with all the lines and like the kind of like rule of thirds of ish rule of third ish ish ishness of it all we'll see if we have some extra blankets <laughs> Well, thank you. That's very, very generous. I do wonder if there's a little bit of a kind of like a silent Irish kind of humor to this. Like, I, I do wonder, like, we're playing within a horror movie can see it and there's a certain tone that's meant to be set. But I wonder if they're actually playing around with her blindness a little bit. Uh, kind of like the like social awkwardness of navigating it. Don't worry about me. Well, you know, I do sometimes. How is everything with your health? No, I'll play the villain. Anything with the brain Ted killed Danny. That's what's going on here. That's the I mystery. Okay. Oh. We'll see how it plays out. Because you, you you wonder with uh, Darcy flirting with with Ted this entire time, like if they're trying, if, if it's meant to set up like them uh, pairing yes. up with each other, them like having uh, them them surviving this this haunting or this issue together but i actually wonder if um it's a fake out that ted is responsible and that he had also killed um he had also killed declan in and he's taking advantage of these patients and stuff in the institution and when darcy is trying to flirt with him uh, flirt with him and massive quotation marks trying to get closer to him he's actually trying to um get greater verse a, a sense of him to use her like psychic powers to like see into his his uh his soul packing and go i'll see you in the morning and that's part of why ted is actually more reserved around her um is that he's like guilty around danny's death and he's trying to like avoid her subconsciously or consciously and that kind of ties in a little bit to the artwork he keeps it's all like Psycho stuff. Something in this is about government funding, though. Something, something about this is like institutions are not being well maintained. Uh, 
and that might tie back into the uh, line he said about wanting to crush the glass eyeball uh, when he first saw it. Like you could say that that's because of the uh, residual feelings he had over Danny's murder, but it might be because he's a psychotic himself and he wanted to um, just crush it or to dispose of any evidence. Yeah, so he looks into like the case histories of these patients and uh, seeks out like anybody that he can exploit or he can um, kind of like uh, blame the murders on them. Why did you take him out of the box? I didn't. Okay. Have you seen my keys? Haha, <laughs> lol. You see? A little subtle Irish humor. I was hoping the three of us could spend some time together. <laughs> Do I look stupid? I have no idea what you look like. You sound stupid. Oh! Olin Bull did not kill my sister. I'll call the police. You just stand here by the door. Keep your eyes open. We got two eyes, one eye, zero eyes. Snapshot. Using the camera to capture the killer, the killer is going to be in the footage. That's kind of like the, uh, <laughs> I can't really say the name of the play, but there is a late 19th century play called the, that featured, uh, photography as a, as a mode of providing evidence of, uh, discovering who a killer is. It's, uh, it's featured in a Brandon Jacob Jenkins play. It's scary. <laughs> ah! I think it's Ted. I think it's Ted. It doesn't really make any sense as anybody other than Ted. I mean, maybe Yana. I, I guess the suspicion is that Darcy fixes Yana. If he didn't kill your sister, who did? That's the mystery of it. There was a mystery attached to caveat too. Um, I don't really remember it that well, but I'd say like. Uh, some beats that this is hitting are less supernatural than more so like a conventional thriller or mystery and that the uh, supernatural or psychic elements of it are like a, a vehicle for discovery like a super powered detective or something of some sort did you fall out of bed and perhaps the uh, the, the the doll the puppet is a, man, a means to mete out justice oh, oh Lynn that with an A or an I? An I. An I for an I. With one I or two. So many one. eye jokes in this movie. Like we wouldn't really know why somebody would need to dress up for this murder and would need to conceal their identity other than the sake, uh, for the sake of the, the movie for a theatrical purpose. Considering how isolated the uh, house is. Sister Francis is buried out there. That blind nun I told you about. Is there something wrong with the <laughs> optometrists in, in Cork? <laughs> uh, that'd be funny if she dropped the phone right in its mouth. Guess she doesn't have a phone anymore. I'm kind of liking this puppet, this like uh, arbiter of vengeance. I wonder what it's like if it has some sort of cultural uh, forebear, what it's meant to be. Yeah, that doesn't look like wood at all, the way the light hits it. I don't know. <laughs> don't put your hand in it. You, you, what do you think, you're Audrey Hepburn? <laughs> Let's see you do it. 
Hmm. It's like a voodoo doll of some sort. Or it's like energized by five different aspects. It's like a golem. That makes sense. Like a, a golem was created to protect like uh, the Jewish um, community and then it ends up uh, doing t uh, killing too much. I mean, I, I don't know if there's like an equivalence in, um, in Irish tradition, but that's like the gist of it. Contains five memories. Odd. Put them back. Odd. Odd. We are connected. We're gonna do a lights out effect. Turn off the light, and she's there. We've set up a little tent here downstairs instead of going back to the city. What do you think, Ted? It's fucking freezing. Well, Not sure showing his face, face again. Kind of like uh, the killer. <laughs> what do you think, Ted? Ooh. Run. Run. That's interesting. Is Danny trying to help her? Why would Danny want to be helping her? Maybe the just the oddity is just so cursed that it would be a uh, like a blight, un un undue punishment. Bye, Yana. So like Yana may have been complicit, but she's not responsible, and so that's why they wanted to drive her out of the house. So Darcy was trying to discover her culpability and found her uh, like not responsible, but like an accessory after the fact. And so she drove her out of the house. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Skywalks are dangerous. I wonder uh, if it's gonna like tie back to something that she said at the antique shop about like um, touching a cursed object. Like, once you touch uh, the, the puppet itself, you'll die a horrific fate. If so, I, I guess that's like an interesting kind of like relational thing going on in the movie. Like, um, um, relating sense of touch and sense of, uh, of sight. Um, it's just like, it, it's playing on senses. Activating different senses uh, to indicate like different powers or different modes of, of observing the world. Darcy. Oh, the trap door. How's that going to play into this? Danny frightened her off. She always was the more level headed. Olin Boo killed Danny. He came out here to save her, and I dragged him from his bed and I killed him. Using the golem. I'm going to pay for that. Why don't you come with me to the hospital? And we'll just have you committed. Just a little bit of a committed. Don't worry, you'll have me committed. I am a danger to Ivan. I am the one who knocks. Did he? T did she touch because his ring? I asked him to. Excuse me. I don't love you anymore. I'm sorry. It would have been difficult, but I would have been there. I have to admit, murdering her was a serious escalation of this. Uh, I actually don't know what his justification would be for that. Why don't you just divorce her? Yeah, that's actually a very serious question. I'm Irish. I'm Catholic. I can't. She loves me. She'll never get over me. When she finds out about Yana, there's no way we'll get to keep the house. Yeah, very, 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 very thin. So thin that light will pass through, and that's the sort of where the name window pane comes from. Very thin justification, and absolutely no need for Ivan to have, to have worn the costume. What if the motive was sexual? <laughs> Just an actor throwing things out here. I'm looking for my motivate. I'm looking for my motivation. I'm looking for my motivation. I wanted to be quick and painless. Oh, he did not do that. I had planned to kill you. But instead, I think it would be worse to expose you. You see how I, what I mean about this is not very much a supernatural film after a certain point. It is a supernatural film, but what I mean is not 
it's not a supernatural horror film so much as it is a mystery thriller with a supernatural bent to it. It's a vengeance film. He was the police officer in charge of that. Hamlet. Yes. yes. Do you trust him? I'm going to leave my phone here where there's signal. It's so not going to call Detective Minahan and tell him to call you here, all right? When the phone rings, pick it up. He set up a, a trap to kill her very quickly. He, he thinks on his feet rather lightly. But is, is like is it like a signal that uh, uh, to let Ivan know where he where she is? No, <laughs> it's uh, I can tell you right. You see this movie already, right? We're already spoiling things, right? A trap door, trap door, <laughs> trap door, <laughs> trap door. Why why did she decide to sit here? This is just like I mean like uh, it's it's kind of like convenience for the move for the plot to uh, further. I mean I guess there would have been like some sort of trap they would have set up. In some ways, watching this movie feels eerily like a uh, Home Alone movie to me, except this is like an intruder coming in with the trap set up to like uh, beat the home. Um, the 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 people in the household. It's like a weird movie of like tricks and traps, and it it, it kind of yeah the trap door. <laughs> um, it it kind of plays out with it with that like sensation of like dispatching them one by one. I'm going to see to it that you lose everything when the phone rings. Pick it up. It's a little five minute twist. I don't know if it's like really if she falls, that would be great. If she had just fallen and they had not revealed this twist, uh, I think that would be amazing. But if she avoids it, then this is just showing off of a twist that's like. Ooh. Like it, it it's it's well set up, set up in terms of the first scene of the movie, but it's not like well set up within the scope of the, like the conversation of them between them because the conversation happened between them like two or three minutes previous to her falling into it. So it's not like enough time to lay an intricate like uh, twist or a trap for the audience. It becomes like a Home Alone level trap as opposed to a uh, Agatha Christie level trap. It's just to set up and pay off immediately one after each after the other. Seems like it had a fall, just like you thought. Is it still working? Oh, no. Just these two having a call already is suspicious enough. You should confirm that it's Ivan first before killing him. I would love it if they don't show the mannequin moving. Um, I think that was something that was really playful about Caveat, was that they kind of used, I, from my memory, they used like stop motion uh, to portray it. And I think if they use something a little bit more fluid, a little bit more CGI-ish, um, while it would be like effective for a modern audience, I don't think it would be um, as scary per se, or as um, uncanny. I mean, if they keep it, well, I was going to say, if they keep it slight, if they don't show it too much, that'd be good, but that's obviously not not what's happening here. <laughs> it kind of just looks like a dude in baggy clothing. Where were you? Why am I here? What did you think the end game to this was going to be, Ivan? Play stupid games. When you woke up, you told the nurse that a man made of wood came to life and attacked you. If that thing was alive, how is it that I was able to drag it outside and burn it? <laughs> it burned down quietly to a pile of ash. You'll spend the rest of your life in prison. It's better than forever in hell. <laughs> the Catholicism is creeping, creeping slowly back I in. No such place as hell. Oh, I see. The earwig character. 
It was a Hannibal Lecter this whole time. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit wearing its influences on its sleeve. I don't even really think the like Silence of the Lambs is like influencing this movie, but uh, that is a funny little. Let's call him the character from Con Air. I, I get a little bit more Con Air vibes from this than than, uh, than Silence of the Lambs. Why does he have the cuts on his forehead? Is he, is he doing extreme wrestling? That's cute. There are a couple now. Do not call me again. Voicemail again. Voice voicemail motif, I guess. The between the relationship of uh, Darcy and Danny, and now the relationship uh, ending uh, is the terminus of the relationship between Danny and Darcy, and it's also the terminus of the relationship between um, uh, uh, Ted and Diana. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, it's the it's the bell. <laughs> Don't touch a cursed item. Do you get what I mean? Saying this kind of feels a little bit like Home Alone ish. That it, it feels like um, it feels like a bunch of setups and payoffs, like a bunch of traps that are being set. Traps that aren't like um, revelations of characters, so to speak. Although this one is because he can't resist the idea of hitting it to because he lives in the real world and Darcy lives in the fake world and he's going to prove it by hitting the hitting the bell but there's like a lot of traps that are uh, established that don't really have like thematic or emotional um justifications to them but they are like satisfactory in like a narrative execution sense Just don't ring the bell next time. There's not going to be a next time, but just don't ring the bell. You never knew. Now you know. Now that you're <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Just, um... Yeah, Cabinet of Curios, I suppose. I... I, I don't really remember um, Caveat that well. I watched it a couple of years ago at this point. But I would say, in my opinion at least, that this felt a little bit lighter than that. That uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, I'm going to give uh, McCarthy the benefit of the doubt here and say intentionally. He was constructing something that wasn't really on the fully on the horror straight horror spectrum um i don't want to call this like a horror comedy per se but it's like um it is in my estimation like a horror with a little bit of a wink to it uh one eye wink no eye wink um that it was a bit tongue-in-cheek and and that it, in some ways it played out more like a, a fable than a straight up straight straight on horror movie uh especially with the presence of like the golem in my opinion um and the the reeking of vengeance and like the 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 playing house the um in my mind the home alone elements of this of clearing the house of the evil spirits and in this case the evil spirits are the humans and not the ghosts that have resided i don't know if it has anything to say necessarily i'd say it it, it, it it perhaps falls a little bit more on the side of uh, o henry rather than henry james um but i think it was like cute and it was fun and this played out like a kind of like a holiday comfort movie to me where um evil is like righteously dispatched and good regardless of whatever like steps it took um was justified in its actions uh, like the 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 degree to which like ted and ivan are such like actual like super villain uh villains in this uh they're not like horrific villains in like a particularly gruesome or like supernatural horror way for me they they play out to me like um crime thriller villains especially ted towards the end of just like i i need to like uh tie tie off any threads or i need to cut off um any any connections to me in this murder and just the the fact of him like murdering his wife for um such unjustified reasons it plays out to me like an agatha christie villain as opposed to uh like a 
I, I don't know, like the shining victim, like a Jack Torrance slowly descending into madness. He feels like the byproduct of a an uncaring social services system that has allowed its neglect and its abuse to um, feed into a m- mentality of psychopathy within its administrators. <laughs> but I actually think that there are elements to this. I don't think this is a scary movie. I, I actually think this is in some ways a campy movie. And I, I, I do wonder if like time will reveal it to be a movie that like with audiences as a movie that has more of a sense of humor than it's actually letting on and that it is playing into those camp elements just 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 smidge just a little bit hiding behind the uh facade of a straightforward supernatural horror horror jump scare movie because like in tone i don't know it feels like almost at the cusp of like um like like a dead and buried maybe um i i'm i'm searching my head for like some some things that kind of like tee the line of like horror comedy without going like full like leprechaun because ultimately at the end of this while i think like the the aims of this are to titillate and to horror and to horrify i don't think like there's like a deep connection that you can like draw with like the relationship of the sisters or what marriage feels like or whatever i think the main elements that you get from this are like horror like titillation and amusement i think it's like a a strangely funny movie (laughs) that's something i'm just gonna have to sit on for a while i actually like am liking it more and more um as the minutes go by and i like really think about the tone of this movie (laughs) yeah that was oddity an odd experience uh not just for the production design or the acting or the cinematography or, or whatever uh but in oddity and tone very 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 subtly uh yeah interesting let me know what you think of oddity did you see it were you like frightened by it would you call this a straight horror horror movie or did you have like weird like uh like back in the neck kind of feelings like i did watching this of like this is actually a different movie disguised as a horror movie i don't know let me know your thoughts And if you have any further horror recommendations with odd tones, be sure to let me know. In the meantime, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Check out my Patreon if you're interested in seeing more obscure films or if you'd like to suggest something. And until next time, keep watching good movies.